Hola, buenas tardes, buenas noches. Good evening, good night. This is Abelardo de la Peña Jr. I'm the Director of Marketing and Communications with La Plaza de Cultura y Artes, welcoming you to, to today's En Casa con la Plaza. En Casa con la Plaza is our virtual series of presentations, demonstrations, performances, and conversations brought to you from our home to yours. We hope you've enjoyed them since we've been doing them since April of 2020. Today's session is sponsored by Union Pacific Foundation. Thank you so much, Union Pacific Foundation, for making these programs possible. A little intro, if you're on Zoom, please ask questions, make comments during the conversation using the chat feature or the Q&A. We'll probably take them after the conversation. If you're on Facebook, do the same thing. Use the comment section to ask questions, make comments, shout outs, lo que sea. Also, let us know where you're viewing from. So we'll know who you are. Also, before we get started, La Plaza de Cultura y, o, de, y Artes is open. We've all been open now uh, full-time since June, every day except Tuesday, from five, Tuesday through Friday from 12 to five. And starting this weekend, two, we open two hours earlier at 10 o'clock. So it's 10 to five p.m. on Saturday and Sunday. Our La Tienda gift store is open as well as and it's also online at laplazatienda.org. Uh, we have a couple of our exhibitions open, Carlos Salmaraz, of course, uh, Evolution of Form, Calle Principal, LA Starts Here. We're presently putting up a new exhibition. So if you walk in, you see, might see a little construction going on that'll open on November 5th called Patriotism in Conflict. Another opening coming up soon is La Cocina, La Plaza Cocina, our mu Museum of Mexican Cuisine right across the street on Spring Street. That'll open in November as well. Our public programming has continued just this last week. Uh, we, last week, yeah, it's been uh, a week and a half now. We had our big Pobladores Gala event uh, honoring the 25 founders of La Plaza, celebrating our 10th anniversary. You could catch that online on our YouTube page. This weekend we have Lea La, L-E-A-L-A, -E -L -A, which is an outdoor festival dedicated to Spanish language literature. Some Heavy names, top heavy names in, in literature, screenwriting, poetry. They're there, there's panels, there's uh, discussions, book readings, lots of books, muchos libros for you to enjoy. And that's free of charge. They're at La Plaza de Cultura y Artes on our outdoor campus. And with that, let me please ask our host for tonight, the Dan Guerrero Happy Hour to join us. Zoom in, Dan. Consider me Zoomed. How are you? I'm doing well, Dan. How are you? I'm good. And yeah, that 10th anniversary, I can't believe it's been 10 years since I saw Blueprints. Gloria Marlena showing Blueprints. I thought I'll never live long enough to see this damn museum. And here you are. You just had the 10th anniversary. It was a great right. night. Well, thank you. It was a great night. And you were part of it. I was a teeny part of it. But, you know, I, I'm going to sign up for that Cocina is magnificent. The, the VIP reception, there was a reception at the uh, Cocina. And uh, it's what a beautiful, beautiful place. And you can sign up for cooking lessons, right? Yeah, when we'll be opening up the latter part of November uh, with a, a reception, of course. And then by before then, we'll have a website up dedicated to La Plaza Cocina that will explain what it's all about as a teaching kitchen, as a museum and a gift store. And uh, it'll have the listing of programs that you could sign up for. Uh, wow. Basically mirroring what we've been doing at La Plaza de Cultura y Artes over the 10 years with Jimena Martin, our Director right. of Culinary Arts at the helm. Yeah. Now I, I am going to sign up. I want to know how to make nopalitos. Well, not make them from scratch. I'm not going to be scraping a damn cactus, but can I have them in a can and then go from there? Hey, it's up to you, Dan. <laughs> okay. Well, I'll see you in a little bit. I, we, we have a wonderful guest tonight. Right. So I'll see you in a bit, Abelardo. I, I, I'm a little at a loss uh, how to address our guest tonight. Uh, doctor, professor, um, at the very least, estimado. I mean, I was calling Abel, and mainly because that's his name. But while I was doing my research and I ran across his vida, I know it's a resume. I don't know why they call it that, but I read it and I thought, well, I'm going with estimado. But he's such a regular guy, he's probably perfectly fine with Avail. So I think we should go ahead and find out. So uh, zoom in, please, estimado Avel Valenzuela Jr. 
Ah, Dodger fan, of course you're a Dodger. So you're happy tonight, right? Well, let's see the outcome. But yes, I'm happy about the other night um, when they walked off the field after that beautiful home run. Um, yeah, I think the whole city erupted in happiness. They did. Now, baseball is the one with the bat, right? Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I get them all confused. What's your beverage of choice here? It looks pretty mm. good. So um, this is, it, it's my first, but it's my, um, it's a duo, a, a do-over. I, um, it's a gin, um, well shaken or double shaken martini, um, dirty with a couple of olives. But yeah. The reason it's a, it's a do-over is that um, the first time I was doing it, I was shaking the, the shaker and it just flew away. It just jumped, it, got, it, it like came alive. <laughs> <laughs> and it went all over. Um, and so I had to do it over. And so um, I, I managed to not um, spill it, um, though it's a little oh, bit. It didn't harder. spill. I was going to say, do you have a pet that got a little loopy there? No yeah, pets? So, no pets. No, it was my my loopy self. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, uh, it, 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 it gin martini, straight up. Wow, gin. I can't do gin. I'm a vodka guy. Gin it just gives me a headache. So I stick to ordinary vodka and glazed donuts, and I'm perfectly fine. <laughs> now, we go back a few years, but, you know, I always, of course, thought of you, which you are, a professor in Chicano studies and all that. And, and, and uh, we ran into each other at the gala last week. I said, you have got to do happy hour. And here we are five minutes later. So it worked out well. So I know you from that, but but and we are going to talk about the Chicano Studies Department there, which, of course, has a very interesting history, uh, how student activism had so much to do with its uh, creation and its growth. And you will have some personal stories about that. But before we go there, I do want to talk about your other gig, if I can call it that at UCLA. No, not your paper route. We're not going to talk about that. Your other gig, which is. I, I can't even, director of UCLA's Institute for Research on Labor and Employment. And I thought to myself, I, I couldn't even fathom the things it covers. And, and as I read, immigration, labor, poverty, inequality, I mean, how do you even begin? Talk about a mountain to climb. And you're the director, everyone's looking to you. Well, yes, and um, it's a big honor for me. It's it's one of it's the oldest what's called organized research units in the University of California. It was actually created by former um, Republican Governor Errol Warren, right. um, who then be went on to become a Supreme Court justice. Um, but he created um, the institute that was then called Institute of Industrial Relations about almost eighty years ago. And it was to basically better understand the science, the relationship between unions um, and management. Um, industrial relations was kind of a nice way to call the growing union density and what that meant for labor markets, what it meant for industries, what it meant for manufacturing processes. And so we needed a science, uh, a center to do that outside of um, a typical business school though, our origins come mm -hmm. from the Anderson School, but we no longer belong there. We're now in the Division of Social Sciences, which in part reflects the evolution of the work to more focus on immigrant workers, on low-skilled workers, on workers of color. Day on, laborers, you're one of the lead day laborers. One of the leading uh, gentlemen in the, in the country, uh, an expert in that field, day laborers. I mean, from what Warren was facing and what you are in your department and we are all facing today is yin and yang. No? It's a much different, yes. Um, things are really, really difficult. But about a year ago, um, you'll recall, we were cheering on what was then a very hearty and honest conversation about essential workers, right? Workers that, of course, you and I um, engage with a little bit more in part because they might come from our families or we certainly know families um, who have essential workers, but that also includes healthcare workers, which we know also pays well. Um, my point being is that about a year ago, 
the, the big conversation, I think, was how can we transition these essential workers into um, better paying jobs? Um, in, the, in the instance of immigrant essential workers, how might um, those that don't have papers move towards a more normalized status? Um, and so um, there was a big moment of, I think, a failed opportunity. It, it, it didn't happen, but it was a moment of opportunity where the country was galvanized, I think, in some ways behind essential workers because they were caring for us, they were feeding us, they were delivering food. But no longer is that conversation. It's almost like we're back to um, ignoring, if you will, as usual, workers, including I mean, their laborers. I mean, as usual, when is how is that ever going to change? I mean, no one thinks anything of it. They go to their Gelson's and they pick up the tomatoes, and they pay the avocados, and they throw and they go make dinner. It does not even occur to them about those people, especially during the pandemic, we're out there, goodness knows not vaccinated, still doing that work and being underpaid and treated badly. I mean, what is it gonna to take to, I'll tell you what's gonna take, them all stopping work one day and walking off the field, which can't happen, I know, but that's what it would take, right? I, I So there's lots of efforts to um, change, but we can do it very easily. Um, for example, um, and, and California is leading in that way, with our minimum wage. Um, if you add it, count it up, you know, what does $15 an hour represent for a full-time year-round worker? It's, you know, shortly over um, $30,000. Now, that's not a whole lot of money, but I'll tell you one thing, it's um, about 50% more than the federal minimum wage at $7 and a quarter, right? Wow. And so um, California, it, it took years to pass uh, a minimum wage increase. And the federal government is not falling in line, but in our own state, we did that. And yes, there was debate and some controversy, but um, you did not hear this exodus of businesses leaving the way many of the detractors predicted. Right. Um, right. And that's a simple policy prescription that impacts everybody, right? A minimum wage of $15 impacts everybody, all workers. So it raises all boats up. Um, that's something that we can do. And there are other examples of how we can improve things for workers um, that are policy driven um, and that aren't that controversial, but for lots of different political and other reasons, it's not moved forward in, in ways that um, we would like. Um, it it so really is. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I was saying it really is shocking because for a minute it did seem like there was going to be real, real big, and that is a big change, but you know, you drive by and you see those fields there and it, it's, it, it's hard to watch. Um, we have a, a photo here of a, uh, a, an article. I'm not sure when the article came out. Abelardo, do we have that? <laughs> working tirelessly for workers' rights. And you're smiling while doing that. So that, that's a good sign. So, yes, um, I was very honored and um, selected to be a part of UCLA's Optimist, um, I, I guess, a, um, faculty group um, a few years back. And um, what the Optimist, um, um, what UCLA tries to highlight with the Optimist, so to speak, um, club is the research that faculty undertake to solve what they would consider intractable policies or really difficult sorts of issues that might be polarized or um, are conflicting in, 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 in debates um, or in the building of schools of thoughts. And so they identified me and um, they did this nice campaign in which they summarized my research and um, they put me on a billboard and on um, the LA Times. And they also put me on the, on a, on the cover of a um, bus, an MPA I was gonna bus. ask, did you make the side of a bus? I That's did. That's big time, that's big and time. I, I had a good friend of mine, um, um, text it to me um, from Orange County. I was in Orange County um, in, in, on a bus. So that was a lot of fun. Um, it was a bit, um, um, I mean, when you see yourself on a big billboard, it can be a little bit jarring, um, but um, it was nice. Um, it, it's always good to get 
recognized for your work. And so, um, I, I, listen, yeah. it's always nice to be to be recognized. I, I want to read a, a quote uh, from the director's message on the institute's website. You're the director, so the, you wrote it. But you say, or you said, I guess you still say, I consider my appointment an opportunity to do what we do best at UCLA: innovative research relevant teaching and service that makes a difference. So I, you really believe uh, in UCLA's mission, I know, as a public institution, and you really do support that. And, and they seem to be doing a good job. Am I wrong? Well, yes, and, but they could be doing more. And, and let's, let's be really, really clear. UCLA is the University of California. It's a public institution. Correct. My dad, my mom, your parents, we currently pay taxes um, to support this institution. And so it needs to be responsive to all Californians, right? Um, and it can do so in lots of different ways, right? One of which is to enroll folks that look like us, um, including hiring faculty that also looks like us. But really the, the University of California, it's known for its research. That's why UCLA is ranked number one. And so that research um, focus on, if you will, all things Latino um, only happens when you bring in not only undergrads and grad students, but faculty um, who together um, make magic in the form of research, bring in grants um, that then supports graduate students. Um, discovery is then made and you start developing um, a community of scholars and knowledge um, that pushes um, the frontier and what we know about Chicano and Central American studies. And we've been doing that big grand project now for about 30 years, at least since um, my arrival. And to be clear, there, were, there, there was parts of this project that was going on. Um, but um, to be certain, um, there's been different waves of growth at UCLA and currently, um, we're experiencing one of those growths. And so it's just really exciting to be a part of this dynamic group of colleagues who are really trying to better understand what it means to be um, Latino um, in this day and age. It's, it's different than it was, I would argue, even 10 years ago. And certainly... Um, try a try 100 years ago. When I was at Garfield, we had know. one Latina teacher, only one in the entire, on the entire faculty. And we were all like, oh, there's a Latina who's a teacher. She was actually the gym teacher, but we'd take what we could get. You know, our Spanish teachers, our two Spanish teachers were Miss Barnhart and Mr. Sherman. So you had all these little brown faces sitting there in Spanish class with Mr. Sherman saying, El burro perezoso cruzar la calle. And then we would repeat it. So it is a little better today. I want to back up because you do love Los Angeles. You were born and raised here in Los Angeles, and you really do love the city. And we, we, we have a little fun photo of you here, I believe. Wrong one. That's my mom and my father. A and that's your family were jumping. There is what I wanted. <laughs> Look at that face. Look at you. Who knew you were going to be such a fancy man growing up? I know. Look at that. I had a lot of hair. Um, <laughs> I look very youthful. Um, and how about that shirt? I think it's velvet with that oh, really God. cool collar. Look at that collar. I mean, it's <laughs> nice. I like it. I, th I think I could wear it now. You probably still have it. Where did you go to school? So um, where'd you grow up and go to gra grade school and all that? I know your sure. fancy schools. Sure. No. Um, born um, in Boyle Heights, though my oh. formative years were in Whittier, right on the um, border um, between Whittier and, and Santa Fe, um, or Santa Fe Springs. And so we were right down the street, for example, from St. Paul High School. Um, but it was um, Whittier where I, I grew up. Um, I, I went to elementary school. We actually drove all the way from Whittier back to Boyle Heights um, to attend what was White Memorial Elementary School, though I started at Bridge Street Elementary, but my mom thought um, I would be better served at White Memorial Elementary, which is a tiny, small little elementary school, um, Adventist, and it 
is adjacent next to the behemoth White Memorial Medical Center. Yeah. Um, it's, it's still there um, and it's in Boyle Heights, um, um, my birthplace um, and a very, of course, important and rich part of Los Angeles. I always uh, very, very rich brag about it. Your mom was a public preschool teacher, wasn't it? working with immigrant uh, children. Both your, your, your parents were from Mexico, right? They, they were both immigrants. Yes, my, my, my mother, um, she, um, she, she has advanced Alzheimer's, bless her heart. And oh. she was a wonderful, um, and still is a wonderful um, mother. She um, really was a, a very important anchor in our household. Um, and uh, she was very judgmental and um, really pushed us, of course, to um, do right by others. Um, and she served as an example and she did what was called parent ed. And her calling was to work with immigrant parents and sometimes grandparents, whoever was um, primarily in charge of the child mm -hmm. um, in kindergarten or in pre-K. Um, and, and so her role was to not only um, work with the children, um, but also with the adults. And so she provided them with um, um, early um, ed sorts of strategies. And um, she would always talk about um, how to um, better connect with schools and about different opportunities for housing, jobs, and other sorts of um, what I would define as immigrant settlement activities, right? But mm -hmm. more socializing and how to um, engage with your children. What are some of the best practices related to hygiene, to our, to teaching and to learning? And so um, she was very much involved in, in that way. And so early on, I think it's fair to say that she influenced me and my siblings to similarly work with others. Um, my my, my um, sister um, is, um, a school psychologist at, in elementary school. My other sister is a public defender. Um, wow. And my brother is also um, a, a professor. And all of that um, wow. certainly comes from my mother, who, um, again, had these values of wanting to help and making sure that we were engaging with other folks. Because as you well know, Dan, um, knowledge leads to power, right? And empowerment, more importantly. And so, I'm um, a firm believer of that. My father was also very important in our household, of course, um, and he's still alive. And um, I'm pretty certain we'll um, watch this in a video recording. And here's a oh, shout out to my great. siblings, I, some of who are online. I see them under the participants <laughs> window. So there were, there were four of you total, four of you? That's correct, four of us, four, 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 wow. I have four siblings. Mm -hmm. The dads are great, but it's always the mama. It's the mama is the anchor of any household, keeps the joint running, right? Oh, that, absolutely. And she still, and you know what? She still <laughs> brings us together on most weekends. And so I want to give my mom a shout out. Do um, it. That's great. That. I'm here's glad we your mom. Mm -hmm. here's here's to your mom <laughs> and to your dad, but to your mom especially. And to my dad, of course, yes. <laughs> Because you are a junior. Let me ask you a question, right. because we have Abel Valenzuela, Abel, uh, Abelardo, you're Abel, <laughs> Abelardo de la Peña Jr. And then you're junior. I don't think I'm a junior. I think I'm the third, which sounds a step up from junior. But I have a question because uh, Abelardo may know this or you may. One time, many years ago, I was doing a show and, and this very famous Puerto Rican singer uh, was going to be a guest, and his father was also very famous. I don't, they were so famous, I can't remember his name, but I'll make up a name. But he went by, you know, Jose de la Torre Hijo. Is that junior in Spanish? I mean, is that commonly known? Have you ever heard that? No, I don't know. Hijo? Hijo. And the comma, it would be, you know, Jose Valenzuela Hijo. And I, and I wondered if that's junior in Spanish. Maybe someone will Google in or something, but maybe I, I, I've never heard of it. I would prefer mijo to hijo, wouldn't you? Yes, I think so. <laughs> Everybody likes mijo. Mm -hmm. um, now, you, you touch on a little bit about being a Chicano student. Let's back up a little bit uh, and talk about your being a Chicano student at Berkeley and then at UCLA. And what was that like to be a Chicano in the UC system school 
back when you were a student and, and we have a photo that might give us a hint, I believe. No? We'll get there. Yeah. <laughs> it's the one of me holding a banner. There, there go. you go. There you go. And look at that. Talk about attitude. Look at totally, you. Totally. Totally. Wow. Um, tell me right about this. My, um, tell me MBA about this day. Friend here, Roberto tell me Maragano. about this. Tell me about this day and this time. So this was Watsonville. And um, I had heard the calling um, from Cesar Chavez about a week before who was rallying support for a big march in Watsonville. And so I, along with um, several hundred Berkeley students, boarded a bus uh, to Watsonville. And it was um, one of my earliest, earliest protests. It was um, certainly my first um, UFW protest. Um, they were out in full force and there's nothing- Was it all about. Chicanos on the bus or also supporters? No, it, Berkeley was pretty mixed. We had a good number of white students, black students, Asian students. Um, but I'm saying, were they on the bus? Were, were they on the bus? Oh, yeah. To go to the rally? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. We were about right. trying to recruit as many people as possible um, right. to have a mass. Um, and so, and we all assembled in Watsonville and we, um, it was fair to say a, about a two hour march, but we were there for another four hours, so to speak, um, talking to folks, organizing, um, thinking about the next uh March or protest. Um, so yeah, that was very formative for me in my um, early years at Berkeley, at least. Um, so was that like in the early, when was that? What what years was that? Oh, okay. that was, um, so I, I, I graduated um, high school in 1981. Um, then I went to a small um, private school, um, La Sierra College in, in Riverside, and then transferred to Berkeley in 1983. Uh, so I was at Berkeley for three years, 1983 to 1986. So that picture is 1984. So, so that, that, that was activism for the UFW in particular, but what about being a student and in school and how uh, Chicanos were treated or not treated? So, or Yeah, it, it, it was a small group. I mean, um, you know, there, there, there was um, one living quarter called Gaza, where you know you had maybe twenty four um, um, brown folks who lived in you know a beautiful you know colonial um, um, triple decker um, up in the hills of Berkeley, not too far from campus. Um, wow. But um, there was a um, small sized group of us activists. I mean, I I, I was involved with Mecha and. Um, you know, a, a good meeting might include 20 of us, um, most meetings, maybe eight, um, but we could turn out folks for important rallies and um, certainly for parties, um, we would get upwards of 100 or more for the dances. Um, so there, there, <laughs> there, was, <laughs> there was a community, but I, I can't say it was like um, you find now. So you, you can take a class in, in Chicano and Central American Studies at UCLA in, in a room of 400 students, right? And that class is taught back to back. And the, the yeah. second class is also full. So we'll teach 800 students um, mm -hmm. an intro to Chicano and Central American Studies. Now, all of the students in that, in that space are not all um, Latino. Um, but it's fair to say that at least 60, maybe 65% are. So it, it's a significant number. I mean, you'll, 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 as you know, Dan, by walking on campus, um, you know, we, 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 we're, we're increasingly um, present. Um, yes, but, but not at that visible. time, but not at that time. Not at, time, remember, not at Berkeley, no. Well, um, I remember in the 70s, yeah, it had to be the 70s, my dad uh, was invited by a Chicano club to Yale. And I was living in New York and he came and we went up there and I'm telling you, when we walked through those gates and he saw this little group of brown kids there greeting him, he literally got tearful that, that brown faces were right. at an Ivy League school. He he was just so overwhelmed and i remember them they felt very dis disenfranchised very much so you know uh, the parents were sending them tortillas as my mom used to do to me because there were none in manhattan in those days you know so it's a very different thing for sure 
Uh, Alice Gaspar de Alba invited me to do this talk that I do. And it was just what you said. I did two of them back to back. There were about 200 wow. kids in each class. And I did, I thought 400, all these, it was, it was thrilling. It was thrilling, but it was not like that when you were there. No. And so, I mean, so Berkeley was a big contrast to be certain. And, you know, when I first arrived at Berkeley, it was also pretty, um, shall I say, bare um, in terms of um, Latino students. It was comparable to Berkeley or numbers. Um, though, you know, part of the grand plan, at least when um, there was a hunger strike and then the creation of um, a unit that then became a department was, the thinking was that you build it, they will come. Are it you was, talking about 1993? Are you talking about the night? Correct, correct. Yeah. The founding of the department and, you know, the initial investment of six FTEs. These are full-time equivalent. These are the faculty lines that are super prized because um, they're basically in perpetuity. The state um, will pay um, the salary of that FTE for until the faculty person leaves, right? And so it's hard to secure FTE, but Chicano Studies um, was able to secure six, and that has since grown. We're almost at 20. Um, the department has grown because student demand is there on our campus, yes. including grad students and faculty want to come to UCLA because of the work that we do. And so slowly, but um, Surely it's growing um, UCLA and its expertise on all things Latino. And so it's, it's, it's super exciting um, to be a part of that growth, to be a part of that development, at least with regards to um, Chicano and Central American studies. Now, you know, that and Central American studies is a right. relatively new thing, something right. that I'm very proud of and something that um, we've worked on for multiple years, right, as part of a larger um, both political project, um, but also a way to um, engage in a canon of research and literature um, that is out there on Central Americans, right? Um, and it's engaging and talking with scholars and others um, um, in, 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 in Chicano studies. And so um, it's exciting to see our department move in that direction. And I really, really believe it represents the future. Um, yeah, and, and it is constantly, think. it's constantly evolving, as you say, adding the, the Central American studies. Right. Um, well, that was about 2010, I think. Was it that long ago? Is that possible? Yeah, um, um, it's, it's, we, well, no, the, um, the name change happened just recently, a few years back, but, um, the push, the move for that um, be began before that, in part through um, different academic reviews and increasingly our own students um, asking um, for courses that are that were more relevant to their experience, right? That we know in Los Angeles is increasingly um, shifting and moving in different directions, right? It's kind of the um, in part the beauty of Los Angeles, but it's also um, the big challenge as well as we try to better understand and, of course, um, do something to make a difference. But I, you know, there, there are a few folks that know what I'm talking about, uh, um, um, as well as you, in part because of your own experience in New York, for example. And of course, um, you know, being the son of Lalo Guerrero, you know, fierce Chicano on horseback, and <laughs> you know, you made it in Manhattan, the domain of. Puerto Ricanos, and then below that, uh, maybe Colombians, right? And um, but it's certainly not now. Maybe it might be Mexican, right? It, it's increasingly moved in that direction. It, it, it is changing. Listen, I, I'll tell you about two. I, I go to New York a couple of times each year, and I, I maybe two years ago I went, and there was a, a Oaxacan playing an accordion in the subway station, and I was like, "We've arrived! We've arrived!" He was wearing his straw hat and he was playing his, it was, it was really freaky. I was shocked. I was like, it was such a surprise. Yeah. And in fact, the, um, what the hell area is that? I don't want to call it something wrong, but somewhere, maybe the Bronx, where, where the Pregonas Theater is. And that was strictly Puerto Rican. That's it. And now every other restaurant is Oaxacan. Yep. It's all from Oaxaca, los Mexicanos, but tons Good of morning. them. Yeah, the best mole, the best mole. So I would think your mom and your dad planted all those seeds for your activism, wouldn't you say? 
Oh, without a doubt. Um, you know, growing up, um, we had a, um, a relatively big home in, in, in Whittier and we had an extra room um, that was slash a kind of a den. Um, there was a couch in there that opened up into a sleeper um, and we had a lot of books, um, but my mother um, called it um, the Chicano room, the Chicano room. We had a room in our house called the Chicano room, not Chicano <laughs> studies, the Chicano room. And there were also posters in there, um, her book collection, um, oh, as well as some of her I brother's um, books. Um, and then us, um, we would also put our books there when we came back from college, right? Um, oh. But this was um, early, early on. This was like in high school, um, elementary school. And I, you know, okay, that, you know, the, the Chicano room. Um, <laughs> so that, that the term, you know, was also a part of my staple, but I can't say that um, the actual, um, you know, scholarly engagement happened until, um, you know, I went on to college. Though, you know, my mom was always pushing us to, um, value our culture and our background she whenever we traveled it was you know to mexico and it always included art and culture she was fiercely proud of her origins also fiercely oh, proud yes. of being in the u.s too and in being in los angeles she had no notions of going back to live in mexico nope 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 um, <laughs> yeah what about we we flash by let's if you can find it again Abelardo, the, the the photo of abel's beautiful family do you see it there? You have three, th th three boys, right? Three boys and a lovely wife. Uh, hopefully we'll, it's coming. Uh, 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 lots of go. stuff are on the stage. I don't know what the people are seeing, but uh, can and we I just- I Zoom too, so- Can, can we just get the photo, Abelardo, is that possible? I'm trying, Dan. Okay. I'll get there, I'll get there. So your your wife? Uh, I think he needs a drink. <laughs> I think he's had a drink. Okay. What? What? You're, are you and your wife instilling the same kind of? I'm sure. Uh, 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 obviously, pride of being uh, uh, Latinos and Chicanos. I don't know if your if your wife what what her background is, and uh, and also uh, um, of activism. There they are. Oh, absolutely. Um, it's a, you know, it's a part of our fabric, our, our DNA. Um, we both engage politically and we both work um, in support of the betterment of others, including, of course, um, Latinos. So um, that's Sophia. Um, she's got great style and look at her glasses. Aren't they cool? I um, love her. Is she uh, Angelina? Is she from L.A.? Where she's she actually from Northern California, from San Jose, um, though, you know, she's a pretty loyal Dodger fan, though, all of her siblings and her parents and most um, uncles and aunts are Giants fans. Um, uh -oh. it, it's also fair to say that she's not a big sports fan, but um, she's rooting with us um, and the Dodgers because the boys are pretty big Dodger fans, at least um, um, the two older ones. Um, so the oldest one is Milan. Um, and then the other one is Miles with a Y. And then there's Mateo, the little toddler, oh, the, my seven-year-old. I love the name Mateo. Uh, yeah, he is like now him. that kid looks like he's up to no good. He's oh, the, yeah. he's a little firecracker. He looks. Oh, like. yeah. he's. Um, you can see um, um, it's trimmed, but I have white hair, and you can see it much more now in this pandemic beard of mine. <laughs> um, and I give him full credit. Um, yeah, you you can tell he's a firecracker. Him. That one. <laughs> <laughs> That's well said. He he, he keeps us busy and. Um, he's very sweet, very loving boy, but yes, very um, rambunctious, and he likes to run and um, do lots of different things. Where, where uh, it's too young for the boys to know anything of what they want to do, I'm sure. But are are they academic? I mean, do they like their studies? Do they know what their dad does? Do they care? Yeah. <laughs> so I dra I drag both of them to different events because sometimes you know they have to go because they're they're part of the pickup or the drop off routine and. I, you know, they, they engage, um, both of them on, um, you know, difficult questions and issues. I mean, we've had to have conversations about um, how to approach a police officer. I mean, my, my kids wow. um, are not um, light skinned, um, they're darker skinned. Uh, and we've had to have lots of conversations and, you know, they're big anti 
um, Trumpistas, and I'm very pleased. Um, it's easy, I think, to point out um, the horrible flaws of that man. Um, and of course, they heard it from me for the past four years. So, you know, I, I don't so much um, push my politics on them, but um, they know better to say anything. <laughs> wrote me, wrote remotely um, supportive of, you know, right wing or, um, you know, non equity sorts of stuff. Um, yeah, I, you are know. There, are there a lot of Latinos where they go to school? Oh, yeah. Um, and I, it, I mean, it's mixed. It's mixed. Right, I, right. It's, it's, so in elementary school, yes. Um, in middle school, a little bit less for Miles. Milan is at UCLA at Geffen Academy. It's this new school. Um, and they have um, a Latino um, population, but it's, it's maybe at 10%. They need to do better. Um, and that's one of the um, efforts that um, they're, they're trying to do. So um, yeah, it, it's mixed. It's, it's perhaps not the way um, it was when I went to school, you, um, Dan. How, how have they dealt with, you know, obviously the pandemic with, with masks in school? Are they, they're all physically back in school now? Yes, yes. So, you know, it's a That's good thing. Hard. I know, I know. I, I, I almost think I, I, I homeschool my kids I, with all the school. It's, it's just so, what? We had drop drills for the atomic bomb. That's it. Drop what? drills. Remember that? Oh, and those were pretty scary, right? Well, you know, thinking back on thinking, we have these little crappy wooden wooden desk drop drill. Oh, yeah, that's going to, an atomic bomb, that's going to save us. Oh, and don't face the window because the light will be very bright. Okay, that's then it. we're going to be fine. I mean, come on. That's like Nancy Reagan with the drugs. Just say no. Just say I mean, no. come on. I, know. I hope you but, never listen to Nancy Reagan, Dan. No, no, no. I was busy with drugs. But but let me but seriously, the, the, the kids today, they're dealing with so much. How do young young people they see everything that's happening in the news? How do you handle that with your kids? I'm curious. So so it the, the, the past year and a half was tough. It was tough for them to be at home and basically grow up, right? In some ways. They're teenagers, right? And they missed out a lot on school. You know, our our, our space isn't that big. And so um, it's not like you could go to your room. I mean, yeah, go to your room is just a few feet away. Um, but, um, you know, they, 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 they were troopers and, you know, we're, we're on, on the other side, though we did have a mini scare. Um, just three days ago, I got a dreaded email from, um, you know, Mateo's school saying that um, he was in close contact with a COVID positive person, which meant that Oof. we had to you know, quarantine, but we've all tested and we've all come back negative and, you know, no sign, no symptoms. And, you know, I was kind of expecting and hoping it wouldn't happen, but kind yeah. of expecting that this is likely to happen because we yeah. don't have a vaccine for children under 12. And, you know, there are That's still right. plenty That's of folks right. who are unvaccinated. Yeah. So, but, you know, we seem to have, um, if you will, gone through this um, little mini scare um, because again, we're, we're healthy, nobody's sick. We practice, of course, safe distancing. We don't go out a whole lot, mask all the time. Um, yeah, we, we, we're, in many ways, we're lucky, right? We're privileged to have been able to play hide and seek and to play it well and to win, so to speak. Um, yeah. Not many folks that look like us um, are so privileged and have jobs that allowed them to stay home. Um, so I'm super grateful yeah. um, for that. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I've enjoyed our talk. I've enjoyed it. We're, we're getting to the place where we're supposed to uh, Alhambra in the house, I read, from Marta Castro. Um, <laughs> Abelardo, do you want to pick a couple of, of, of questions for our pal here? Yeah, well, I'm glad to be back. I'm sorry for the mix-up with the slides. Uh, fingers aren't probably working my that good fault. today. Yeah, no. <laughs> Anyway, we have uh, today, Gabriela Reyes joined them from Covina, California. Uh, Michelle Gerardo from Apple Valley. Victor Narro, I think you know Victor Narro, don't you, Abel? Totally, and my other good friend, Vilma Ortiz is on. I see you there, and Marta Cras Castro from Berkeley. Um, and listen to this, my compadre, um, actually he left, he was on. But my brother, my baby brother, Ali Valenzuela is on. Uh, uh, oh, I see right there. Yeah. 
and the participants. Oh, he's giving you a wave. I thought he was flipping you off. I couldn't see. <laughs> maybe I maybe. couldn't see very well. <laughs> and my other sister's on too, Cindy Valenzuela. I want to know where my third, where, where my um, third sibling is, Gracie. I'm gonna have to give her a hard time, huh? Well, yeah. you'll be happy to know that these live forever. They are in the archives at uh, La Plaza. They are on YouTube. They will be there. Your kids, when they're your age, will say, yeah, that's my dad. Yeah, that's what they're going to do. They already say that, too. <laughs> so, you, you, I, was, um, um, I was asked to give some opening comments, um, welcoming comments to a group of scholars, young scholars, who were there with their parents. Um, it was a capstone where they were gonna present their work, right? And so they were gonna do it in this formal setting. And so they asked me. Um, and, and this group of young folks were um, undocumented students from all across the entire University of California. And this was right in that period when there was a lot of the separation going on um, under the um, previous administration. And I remember reading my comments, I put them together and. Um, you know, all I had to do was read them, but I was triggered and I started <laughs> crackling and, um, you know, crying. And my kid was there and uh -oh. I was looking at him and he's sitting down and he's just looking at me he's like, <laughs> you know, kind of like, is that really you, dad? Um, and, you know, he also felt bad. Um, but yeah, um, they've been pushed and brought to different events and uh, you know I think well, it's good for them right I mean how lucky are they right to hang out at UCLA give me a break of course that's the best I see here your bro says that he needs a do-over what does that mean <laughs> he says drinks? I need one of your do oh the drinks the drink <laughs> Dan come on Dan the drink yes <laughs> that's right Oh, and look at my sister is there. So my sister has been hanging out with um, this group group of you know fierce, um, badass um, attorney women from um, law school days um, at Hastings. Oh. All and right. So they always go out. I think it's twice a year. Um, and so um, Sophie um, was kind enough to send um, invitations of our happy hour to a bunch oh. of friends and family members. And so my sister. Um, and her Mujeres friends, who I've known for many years now, are, I think, watching this. I mean, that's a pretty big lift on a Friday night, Dan. I know that. You got to give them a shout out and all of that. And you know what? You're, you're right. Wife. Because, you know, during the pandemic, it was pretty, hey, Eddie, almost can you do? Okay, Friday, great. Dolores, well, yeah, because everybody was home. Everybody was home. And right. now all of a sudden, can you do it? Oh, no, I can't do it that night. How about Thursday? It's Fridays. How about the, no, it's, it's, everybody is out again. So we're having to figure uh, out how to handle this. It was much easier during the pandemic to book the show. I got to tell It was, I'm, and I, you probably, you know, had more than um, the vast majority of the, of my, of, of the participants being family <laughs> and friends, right? And, um, but that, that's good. And um, there's Sylvia, uh, who's Haraway, who's also a good friend of ours um, from our, soccer um families right so we have like different friends from different that's right camps, that's right you know, little different our, posses yeah. different uh, posses different that's posses. right uh -huh. I, uh, I want to thank you again so much very much for doing this i'm glad i ran into you i've always thought you're terrific i always have and you're always just like he is here abelardo he's up and energetic and i don't know how they usually ask women this unfortunately but i will ask you because it's the same thing how do you find family time with your work which is so i mean if you were just in the Chicano studies or just in the other, how do you find time for your family? And I'm sure you do, because you're obviously a family man. Well, you know, I, I, I let a good part of my work sometimes go and um, I could be more productive. Um, I could have more um, publications and I could do a better job of communicating with colleagues in my institute, but um, it, it, you know, I, I, I do a pretty good job there as well, but a very I, good job. I, I learned a while ago that um, most important to me is my kids and my wife and, and then slightly beyond that with extended family. And so I'm, I'm so lucky that I have the space and the resources, right, to do that. So um, I count myself very, very fortunate. Thank you for coming by tonight. Uh, oh, hey. Oh, oh yeah, these are the kids. Yeah. Great. 
So where, this where, is Milan, and this where's is Where's the firecracker? Where's the, where's the firecracker? Hand. Where's the little one? Is he sleeping? Oh, yeah, he's knocked out. Knocked out. They probably yeah. drugged him just yeah. to get some rest, right? Totally. <laughs> where's your wife? Is she not nearby? Yeah, she, she, she told them to come up here, I'm pretty certain. But <laughs> do you see her here? She was, nope, nope, nope. Go no, she won't do your it. Dad, what she said. I'm glad to I'm glad to meet your sons. You got a great dad, but you already know that, right? Yes, yes yeah. we do. All right. All right. I'm gonna have to give them their, you know, back in the day, it's called the Domingo. They're um alone, oh, yeah. right? You remember that Abelardo? Domingo. Oh yeah. Every, every, Domingo? Because every Sunday, Sundays. every Sunday dropped in the coins or when we got older, the dollar bills. But yes, the every the domingos I don't know were anything about that. What about. is that? You mean like allowance? Yeah, your allowance. Oh. No, Come I on, just Dan. used to I just used to ask for things. It was just easier than <laughs> dealing with allowance. It really was. <laughs> Thank you, Avel. I love you. I'll Dan, see you soon. Okay. Can you ask me to do this? I was thrilled to death and I would do anything for you. Um, your contributions, your talent. We've known each other for years. It, you know, our relationship at UCLA. So it was a pleasure and I feel honored. Um, thank you for the invitation. Abelardo, thank you as well for your technical assistance. This is great right. fun. You're welcome. You. Uh, Abel, could you share a, a website or, or what, however, people could contact you or learn more about your work or or the the organizations that you that you work at why don't you go ahead and drop them into the the chat there and i'll cut and paste it onto the facebook so people will know more about you outside Here's of my this email wonderful happy hour. Me, um give you my um um web page um at the institute um as yeah, well I and also it, yeah. i can give you my twitter handle all Whoa, right. you're so hip. You're Not so bad, hip. huh, Dan? I know, I surprise myself sometimes. Because, <laughs> um, um, well, I tweet, um, I can't say that I have a whole lot of followers, but I'm trying. Okay, so here's the institute that I direct, and there's a lot of stuff there. And then, here's All right, I'm copying that. I'm putting it on the Facebook. And then let me give you my um, tweet handle. Hold on. I should know. Mr. Valenzuela that. is the best, says Silvia Waregi. Haraway. Haraway. I'm a I'm a pocho. Don't 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 give me grief. <laughs> Here's my tweet handle. Okay, great. Thank wow. you. All right, Twitter. Uh, I want to thank all my family and friends who were um, hanging out tonight. Um, <laughs> I hope you got a buzz going um, with your drink, um, <laughs> but I do appreciate you. And that's nice of you to say and, and, and send all these ch um, shout outs. Um, Dan, if we break the attendance record, you need to tell me, right? And I you need will to make tell you that. A special note of that. Do you got I that? I absolutely tell you. I will absolutely tell you. I can bring them out. <laughs> <laughs> Have well, a thank great you. weekend, Abel. Bye-bye. All right. Good night, Abel. Good night, Dan. Thank you all Good that night. joined thank us. Thank you. Yes, all of uh, uh, Abel's family there for joining us. You're at least uh, a quarter of the audience, but we appreciate it. If you caught this episode, you want to watch it again, you didn't catch the whole thing, we have it on, we'll be posting it on YouTube at La Plaza LA. It's on our Facebook page at La Plaza LA, and it'll also live on our website, LAPCA dot org and i also dropped in all uh, dan guerrero happy hour playlist you'll see the 40 plus interviews that he's done so far all of them entertaining informative i mean he the guy could uh, could uh, get answers from anybody so it's a lot of fun having dan around and you could catch all of his shows at uh, on our youtube site uh and with that just want to let you know next uh monday we are closed at La Plaza de Cultura Artes commemorating Indigenous Peoples Day. So, so take some time on that day to, uh, to really reflect on, on our peoples on the land. I see you still drinking. I see you still drinking. It's water. It's water, Dan. Uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> uh, Thank you um, all. Of course, this uh, tomorrow and Saturday, Leala is the Spanish language 
uh, book festival, literature festival. It goes on from about 11 o'clock to six o'clock. I uh, saw some incredible authors there today. They'll be there tomorrow and Sunday as well. Uh, and the next, uh, that's at La Plaza de Cultura y Artes, 501 uh, North Main Street in downtown LA, right across from Olvera Street. So that's uh, tomorrow. Our museum is also open tomorrow and Sunday. Uh, again, we'll be closed on Monday, reopening on Wednesday. And our next En Casa con la Plaza is this Wednesday, where we'll be looking back at, back at our Pobladores Awards event with some highlights, including the performance by Lupita Infante, uh, when we honored our 25 founders of La Plaza Cultura y Artes, and mucho más here on En Casa con la Plaza next and Wednesday. What, and what is your blood type? That's the only thing you haven't given us tonight. What's your blood, My blood type? Uh, uh, o positive, yeah. <laughs> I, I hope people were writing this down. My God. Well, uh, you must be recorded. You must what? be interested, Dan, because you're still around. <laughs> Bye bye. We'll see you. We'll we see you later. We love La Plaza. We I'm, love La Plaza. I'm glad you do. The, the programming you all do is unbelievable, and they're a very great. small team. They're a very That's small great. team. Yeah, I love La Plaza. And the it's space is amazing. Home. The space is amazing. My second home. All right, Belardo. See right. you later. Okay, bye. this is a buenas noches a todos. Bye bye. We're good. All Thank right. you, family and friends. <laughs>